YouTube! Perez Hilton here, and that's Teddy Hilton. <laughs> He's living the life right now. Yesterday, I briefly touched on the new Shane Dawson series on Jeffree Star. Well, some people tweeted me about it today, and it turned into this big to-do on Twitter, and Shane himself even started tweeting me. So I wanted to go a little bit more in-depth and also reveal that I watched the second episode, which I had said earlier today I wouldn't on Twitter because the first one did not leave me wanting more. You know, Shane, to his credit, has been doing these long form series on YouTube, really amazing work this year. The Tanacon series, I watched every single one of them and I was riveted. However, the Jeffrey one did not leave me feeling compelled to keep tuning in because, and this is the crux of it, has Jeffree Star grown and changed? Duh, we all have, every single one of us. Every day we're alive, we're growing and changing and hopefully, if we were awful in the past, we're not as awful as we used to be or maybe we're not even awful anymore. I'm not sure about Jeffree Star. I know he still does awful things and is awful to a lot of people. Just this year alone, he was parking in a handicapped parking spot in Malibu, even though he's not handicapped when called out on it. He said he had AIDS, starting fights with other YouTubers, which is smart because it gets him attention. But to me, that's not a lot of evolution. Um, but then again, people could accuse me of being the same and doing what he does. Uh, and I'll get to the difference, right? Um, you know, the biggest gripe I had with the first part of the Jeffree Star series that Chain Dawson did is in many ways, Jeffree Star is a lot like Kylie Jenner. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they may have a lot of the same audience. What's interesting about Jeffrey is that he was very popular and then he went away and now he's had a resurgence in popularity. And I think a lot of his new fans are young fans, are Kylie Jenner type fans. And what he's offering them just seems so shallow and superficial to me and vapid and meaningless. And yes, some people might argue that I do the same, but I really like to think that I discuss many different things. I mean, if you read my website, if you listen to my podcast, it's not just Kardashians. It's not just celebrity. I talk about politics. I talk about current events. I talk about whatever I want to because I'm the boss and things that I think are important to share, gay rights issues, Latino issues, whatever. So I don't know why, but I was like, you know what? If I'm going to talk about Jeffrey and Shane, let me watch part two, which was just released today. And part two was more of the same. It was a beauty makeover and Shane getting done up by James Charles. And it was so shallow and superficial. Even when talking about the past and mistakes he made, I never saw remorse from Jeffrey Star. I saw defense, you know, he was explaining his behavior, but not really owning it and saying, I'm sorry. Um, it didn't dive deep into those issues. Um, it was just more of the same. It was shallow. It was makeup and, and glam and money and money and wealth and money, sister. Oh, la, 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 la. oh. I have zero plans of watching parts three, four, or five. I can't believe it's a five part series, but good on him. I don't wish anybody ill at all. Jeffree Star has been able to make something and turn things around and that's really hard to do. So <laughs> credit to him. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I'm like a drama vlogger now talking about YouTube drama, but I'm finding it really interesting and organic. And I like to talk about what's truly on my mind, what's happening in my world. And that was happening. And I also saw this that was happening that was interesting to me because once again, I related to it and I just found it interesting or confusing. 
I'm sure you guys are familiar with PewDiePie, the gamer. He was the most subscribed channel on YouTube. Is he still, is PewDiePie still the most subscribed? Actually, let me do this really quickly. I wanna see how many views he's getting on YouTube. Let's see. He still has 64 million followers on YouTube. I mean, his he still gets several million videos a view, uh, several, several, several million views a video. Huh, but it's interesting. He doesn't, he's doing a lot of different kinds of content. It's fascinating analyzing his content and it's very interesting why he did what he did. So basically PewDiePie made a video slamming Logan Paul and also KSI. Why? Same reason I mentioned that Jeffree Star does it, for attention. I'm not doing this for attention because <laughs> barely any people watch my videos. Let's get real. I have 250,000 subscribers. <laughs> No, and also, like, I freaking complimented Jeffree Star. You know, I'm, I'm giving, I'm trying to give you all truly objective critique and commentary. I don't like Jeffree Star. He's grown some, but I don't think he's evolved enough to make him appealing for me, but I'm not his audience. Maybe you're his audience, maybe you're not his audience. Actually, I'll get back to that. Let me know below. Do you follow any of these people? Do you follow Jeffree Star? What's his appeal? Do you follow PewDiePie? What's his appeal? So I don't think what I'm doing in this video is what PewDiePie is. PewDiePie is stirring the pot, specifically in the YouTube world, to try to get more attention because the Paul brothers are getting more attention than PewDiePie is. Specifically, PewDiePie was talking about this fight that Logan Paul has scheduled with this other YouTuber, which I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. It's Psy or KSI. And PewDiePie called Logan Paul and this other guy scumbags. And he says, um, quote, you both are scumbags. He says, these guys are just purely driven by money. Uh, isn't PewDiePie? Is he some altruistic vlogger now? Is he not doing it for money? Hypocrite. Hypocrite! Call a spade a spade. Um, Logan is the type of person to do whatever it takes to get whatever he wants between KSI, blah, blah, blah. Um, he also called out Logan Paul on taking the moral high ground recently and blah, blah, blah. You know what? I still don't like Logan Paul, but I do appreciate that he is trying to be better. Like, let's not knock down people trying to be better that are doing better. That's the thing with Jeffree Star. I don't see him doing much better. I just see him doing less bad, if that makes sense. So I applaud Logan Paul and at least Logan, like Logan Paul, well, I don't want to get in trouble. I'm trying to be positive. Let's just say Logan Paul isn't very bright. That's not an insult. That's just to say, I don't think Logan Paul is malicious, right? He's just like a dumb dude. I don't think he was malicious Listen, I'm not an expert on Logan Paul, but PewDiePie to me is malicious and has said racist things, has just been next level awful. You can't even compare Logan Paul and PewDiePie, okay? PewDiePie, pfft, awful, awful. I'm tired of talking to these people. Jeez Louise, let's move on. But I'm not done with the awful people yet. Sorry. Ivanka Trump is speaking out about her dad against him, and that is shocking to me. In a new interview with Axios, at, or at an event, at an Axios event, she talks about her father's separation policy from children, saying, that was a low point for me as well. 
I felt very strongly about that and I am very vehemently against family separation and the separation of parents and children. Listen, I believe Ivanka is complicit, but once again, like I'm, maybe it's my magical unicorn shirt. I'm in a very, um, everybody's great, ish mood not really but <laughs> uh i'm trying to look at the positive of things and i am shocked and applaud ivanka trump for even saying that you know speaking out against her dad that's major especially because we all know how fragile of an ego donald trump has and she's still complicit and you can still be complicit and speak out against your dad i mean there's really not much else she could do, at least not publicly, because she'd be a bad daughter then. And no matter what, sorry, this is one of my family mottos. Family is everything, family first. It's what I teach my kids. All right. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. I mean, probably, I think I've spoken about it on this channel, but one of the recurring themes on my family channel is I'm obsessed with money because I have kids. When you have children, you can never have, well, I, that's not true. I'm looking for, I'm working towards a specific goal, my FU money, which is not so I could have a huge mansion or fancy car or whatever. I just want to be able to budget and know this is how much I spend per year to raise my kids. I need to have enough money for the next 20 years or so for that. But I still have this fear that I'm going to squander it all or it's all going to go away. It's like, I know it's slightly irrational, but Charlie Sheen is claiming that he's struggling financially now. This dude was making so much money on Two and a Half Men and not just Two and a Half Men. He was also making so much money when he did that other show, Anger Management. He was making, I think, like a million dollars an episode or something like that. And they did like, I think uh, over a hundred episodes. Like where does all that money go? Uh, Charlie had been paying his ex-wife, Denise Richards, $20,000 a month. And his other ex-wife, Brooke Mueller, $55,000 a month for their twins, Max and Rob. Denise also had two kids with Charlie. Uh, he claims that all of this money that he's paying is $2.1 million a year, that he still owes the IRS $5 million, and that he only has $10 million to his name. Somebody give Charlie Sheen a job. That's another thing. He's claiming that he's blacklisted and is having a hard time finding work. Somebody give Charlie Sheen a job and me a job while we're at it. <laughs> I'm very happy at my job at Chippendales though. I'm here through September 2nd. There's meet and greets, there's photos after. I would love to see you all. All right, an update on a story we spoke about earlier in the week, the whole Tyson Beckford, Kim Kardashian drama. He commented on her body saying it looked fake. Cause it is. I mean, it's still shocking to me that Kim Kardashian denies having her butt done because it's so obvious. So Kim clapped back, blah, blah, blah. We talked about it all. But here's an update. Tyson has had the final say. He just posted uh, a workout photo of himself with the caption, I defend those who can't defend themselves. I support LGBTQ even though I'm not gay. This is a direct clap back to Kim alleging that he is gay or bisexual. And he clapped back in a classy way, whereas Kim just, Kim just clapped back in a haphazard way and quick and I don't think she will respond to this because that would acknowledge her owning that she did something that many people could interpret as being homophobic or anti-gay. You could say or do something anti-gay and not be homophobic. Like, some gay people could be, could do something anti-gay and not be homophobic. I don't even know, you know what I mean? You, you understand what I'm trying to get at. 
All right, on to other news. Another update. Nicki Minaj and Ariana Grande are also clapping back against their own fans who um, were talking about Nicki pushing back her album by a week, which I talked about in yesterday's video. Well, um, they claim it's no big deal. Uh, they both say they love each other and blah, 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 blah. Sure, but only one of you will be on top. Similar to what we spoke about with Charlie Sheen, NBA star Blake Griffin has been ordered to pay his ex a lot of money, way more than Charlie Sheen has to pay. Blake Griffin has had to pay his ex-wife, just in this new order by a judge, $258,000 a month. Is that too much? Clearly, that's too much. Definitely, that's too much. On to happier news, Noah Cyrus has got herself a new man. According to reports, she is dating Lil Xan. And I would be a little concerned about that if I was Noah Cyrus's mom or Miley because Lil Xan has struggled with drug addiction and he raps about it. And I would just be concerned about him and keeping an eagle eye on him. Finally, congratulations, I think, to Christina Aguilera. According to reports, she's pregnant. And there are also some reports that Christina is going to be canceling her tour. I don't know if I believe that or not, but... Or if she even needs to. You can still perform pregnant. Is that just an excuse for poor ticket sales? Hey, the pregnancy is not confirmed yet either, and neither is canceling the tour. And I want to send Christina positive vibes either way. If she's pregnant, yay. If she's not pregnant, not pregnant. I hope she doesn't cancel her tour. It's been over a decade since Christina Aguilera has been on tour. Yes, there are poor ticket sales. I looked on Ticketmaster before I made this video. So hey, I'm promoting it. Go on Ticketmaster right now and buy tickets to go see Christina Aguilera in concert. And I just wanna also thank you for watching this video. Follow my family channel, you know the drill. Follow me on Instagram, you're amazing. I thank you, I love you, Teddy loves you. Mwah.